In a post-apocalyptic hellscape, you find comfort where you can, like gently brushing your nose against a punk's mohawk. Yes, embrace me, friend. We shall get through this nightmare together. You smell like lavender. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Drivehaze, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMO games I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff, and ring the bell for all future notifications, and as usual, a massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch for keeping the channel going. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we're playing Anomaly Zone, described as an MMO survival third-person shooter set in an irradiated future. Think Fallout without power armor. Now, to make sure these games are actually still playable before downloading them, I sometimes hop on the Steam discussion page and... Ah, right. I see. Another Russian game. Well, it can't be worse than Avatarica, so let's do this. First choice is PvP or PvE. Now, I'm a PvE guy, so that's a pretty easy choice for me. Now to create a character, and the issues begin. You can play as a native human or as an alien, but not an actual alien. Alien as in non-native. But look at the top left. They've missed the letter L from the word alien, so it's native or alien. Customization's pretty bad too. You've got a load of hairstyles, but no way to scroll through them easily. You've got to click and drag this icon along the bar, and the sections are tiny, so you'll jump over them super fast, and all the hairstyles change your face, shape, and skin colour. And they've all got weird names. Like, they're not called hairstyles like short or long or shaved or mohawk. They're called things like Bob, Terry, William, Psycho, Ming, Blue. There's also a choice of jacket and trousers, and then you get a boot choice, but the lighting is so dark and you can't move the camera, meaning you can't actually see what boots you're choosing between. The game starts, it's a third person over the shoulder WASD movement camera, mouse wheel does not zoom in and out, the camera distance is fixed. Is there jumping? There is, but what? What is that? What are your arms doing? Don't do that, you look ridiculous. Pressing Q throws some garbage, so that's good to know. Might need to take down a super mutant later by throwing some balled up crisp packets at them or something. To the top left, we've got the tutorial box, so I've at least got a basic guide to help me start, which is nice. I opens the inventory, and I actually quite like the UI design. Square item grid on the right, equipped items on the left, nice graphical flourishes around the edge, nice image of your actual character and lines pointing to where stuff is equipped. Honestly, this doesn't look bad. Click and drag a pistol into the offhand slot, and now I have a pistol! Standard third-person shooter controls, left-click fire, right-click aim down the sights. Do you want to see what aiming down the sights does? Well, behold. Fantastic. It's basically a sniper. You chat to NPCs with F. There's no tooltip mentioning this, I just pressed every key until something worked. Meet the blacksmith. This guy will be your main quest giver. But this game handles quests in a very unusual way. Some NPCs have quests, some don't. You won't know until you talk to them. And sometimes the quests they have change, so you need to talk to every NPC repeatedly until they give you a quest. We're sent to find a rifle dropped by somebody else. How do they know where the rifle is? It doesn't matter, just go and find the rifle. And is this the lobby from the first Matrix film? The quest journal overlay isn't bad either. List shown on the left, clicking the little light bulb icon by each quest name turns tracking on or off. Some quests have map icons, some don't, some have general directions. So we venture out from the safety of this starting camp. Finally, combat in the irradiated world. Marvel at the thrilling encounter between rat and man. Exhilarating stuff, I'm sure we can all agree. Find the rifle, Quest says take it to the repairman, but there's no indication of where he is, so I just run around for a while. The actual environmental design isn't bad. I can feel there's definitely the foundation of something good here. While looking for the repairman, I instead find the doctor, and they have certainly got some audio balancing to do, because getting close to the doctor makes this happen. Even in the post-apocalyptic future, Russian music still sounds exactly like Russian music. 
Pressing M brings up the map, and for an MMO, it's not actually massive. It's around the same size as the White Orchard opening area from The Witcher 3. I feel they've scaled it down so they can focus on quality over quantity, but then they forgot to actually focus on the quality. There's nothing wrong with having a smaller map if it's densely packed with stuff and systems, and I will explore around more later. I pick up some more quests from some locals and try to complete them, find some herbs, kill some rats, but there is an issue with the quest list. Quest chains are aren't held in a single quest line. If the first part of a quest chain tells you to speak to A, and then they say go and speak to B, the objective of speak to A remains in the list as its own separate quest despite being finished, so it's easy to lose track of where you actually are in a chain. And sometimes you'll complete a quest and it will just stay in the list anyway. And sometimes they'll say you've done it when you haven't. I mean, I've got the quest Speak to the Blacksmith, and I've spoken to the Blacksmith many times, and speaking again does nothing new, but I've still got the quest. It's not changed to a completed step. It's small touches like this that push new players away within the first five or ten minutes of playing. People expect basic systems like questing to actually work. And then the game crashes. And I didn't know this at the time, but this will happen a lot. Log back in. Let's try again. Coiler tells me to talk to the blacksmith. I have. I have several times. Nothing happens. I have a play with the icons under the minimap while waiting for something to happen. Standard MMO stuff, inventory, maps, skills. I'll look more at this later on. There's clans, PvP rankings, reputation within various factions, and a lot of systems that most people will never ever use because the core gameplay seems to have so many issues and there's a crash bug. Why do designers always overstretch and focus on the bells and whistles like faction reputation or seven levels of wearing a suit skill before they've made the game stable and the opening experience smooth? There's no point saying you've got thousands of hours of gameplay if the first hour is complete shit, because no one's going to go through the first hour. Oh look, zombie dogs, let's try and take some of these down. And oh, you can loot them. They drop zombie heads. And apparently you can sell them for money. Hang on a second. Buggy early game. Loads of overly complex systems. Zombie heads making money. If I unmask anomaly zone, is it just mortal online in disguise? Pressing tab switches the camera to your other shoulder. I really, really like this system, although I feel that giving it the tab key is using a very prominent key for a very minor feature. The ambience of the game is decent. The birds circling over the main building, so you've always got a visual navigational reference, is really nice. The colour palette's fine, the weather effects, the distant gunshot sounds, it's ambient. They've got a nice feeling world, it's just weak in the gameplay. I accept a quest to find some toys in local houses, because apparently they are rare items now. So off we go. Oh, also I find the repairman I needed earlier. He's by a row of shops selling all the virtual things and I have no money. And he doesn't buy dog heads. In fact, no one in this row of shops buys dog heads. Fine, I guess I will keep my severed dog heads to myself and I will sell them to someone who appreciates them in the future. Outside, I find a bar. And again, really nice environmental design. Damaged exterior, guard, messy interior, lots of NPCs, sitting around drinking what drink remains, bluegrass rock, playing through a slightly distorted radio. I love the mannequin with knives stuck into it. You know someone's been practicing their knife throwing, which fits the design of the world. It enhances the whole dystopian mood. But this is just an acceptable world design on top of a mediocre gameplay framework. When your mum says, we don't need to buy Fallout, we've got Fallout at home, this is what you've got at home. Let's do that toy quest. So we go into the abandoned house and we find a suitcase by the front door and that was it. No animation, no sound, just press F and you now have the quest item. Kind of underwhelming. I explore around the house for a bit and then I find the most terrifying thing so far children. I am out of ammo, so time to run away. One thing I've noticed about the ammo is you don't have an easy heads-up display of how many bullets are loaded or how many you have in reserve. This is usually super important information in most shooter games and something you're meant to be able to always see, but not in Anomaly Zone. Part of the hardcore not holding your hand experience is counting your shots, and ammo is expensive. Oh, it's also raining, and the weather effects are acceptable, and the sound design is nice for the rain. So with no bullets left and three toys to find still, I just sprint into the next few houses, grab the suitcases, and sprint out. Enemies don't have a very long chase range, but god damn do they hit hard. 
So hard, in fact, I die. And this is how death works. As soon as you die, you have a few seconds to choose if you want to respawn in the nearest safe zone or wait 30 seconds to get up. If you don't make this choice within a few seconds, the game makes it for you and you are forced to wait the 30 seconds to respawn. And once the 30 second waiting has begun, you cannot change your mind and respawn in a town. You have to just wait. So after 30 seconds, I just get back up. Except I've lost a few items, because it's a hardcore game, so of course you need to lose a few items on death. I search around and find some plants. Maybe medicinal might be useful, so I take them back to the doctor and see if he can make anything. And, ah right, it's a component of medicine, but I need way more components to actually make anything. This is a rather complex system, and the game has done nothing to introduce me to it or explain how to use it, despite the fact it would be super useful to have in the early game. One common problem I see with hardcore games is not only do they have complex mechanics, but then they do nothing to help you approach those mechanics. And then they often complain about having no players. If you want people to play your game and understand the complexities of it, you have to have an inviting opening section and at least the framework of a tutorial available. I try running into the house to grab the toys and no, I die again. I don't have any medicine, I can't afford to buy any and your health respawns super slowly and without ammo I can't fight so I am forced to wait for my health to refill so I can risk a charge into a house. The blacksmith has a new quest. I have been talking to him every time I've passed and he's said something different every time and he's finally got a new quest. This time he wants me to bring him a knife and a stick and as a reward he'll give me a shotgun. Clearly Russia haven't mastered the art of balanced trades yet. The rain has now stopped and a dust storm has rolled in, complete with thunder in the distance and it's actually really immersive. God, there are some really nice parts to this game and then some really shit systems. It's a shame, because the framework of a decent game is here, but the actual experience isn't quite there yet. Another quest tells me about crafting, but I need to be level 3 to learn how to craft. Then I level up by killing enemies, so I need ammo, but I have no money to buy ammo, so I need to complete the risky death run quest into the house to get the items to finish the quest, to get the money to buy the ammo to kill the enemies to level up the crafting! You really think basic crafting should be a starting ability to actually let you make bullets? The blacksmith then sends me to the recruiter, and they tell me to pick a class and a role from druid, warrior, pathfinder, mechanic, or researcher. As much as I like the sound of researcher, a class that specifically helps boost others and build useful stuff to protect the base, support roles only work when there's an actual community to support, so I need to be solo friendly, so I'll go with warrior. So now I'm officially a warrior, off I go to smite down evil and the game crashed again. I really need to find this final toy, because that toy quest might give me some money for some more ammo. Oh, and also that assault rifle I went through so much trouble to find and repair earlier, it got destroyed when I died, so rip rifle. I gained some experience and now I'm level 2, go me. Let's glance at the skills and abilities. The list is extensive, skills needed to handle certain guns, some skills for armour types, up to 7 levels of proficiency in wearing armour types. Seriously, you can improve your shirt wearing skill up to level 7, then there's crafting abilities, combat abilities, so I buy a few passive armour buffs and the ability to use rifles despite not having one anymore. This system actually seems pretty fleshed out, it's a shame that no one will be able to fill it up because the actual gameplay is buggy and boring. Eventually, after an hour or two of running around and jumping into corners trying to clip out of the map and speaking to people, the quest line manages to find itself again and I get rewarded for killing some rats and manage to buy some ammo and then I go and hunt some more rats. How would I describe this game to somebody else? Imagine Avatarica and Fallout had a steamy night of passion while Defiance 2050 gently sobbed in the corner. This is that game. Kill the rats, hand in the quest, get the reward, finally feel like I'm making progress, on to killing more zombie dogs. Slight aiming issue discovered, you can't look all the way down. So earlier, when a rat ran up to my feet and started biting me, I had to keep walking backwards so I could shoot it. This is a common issue in many low-budget third-person shooter games. If you're going to let the enemy walk right up to the player model and the enemy is small, you also have to let the player aim directly down. Oh, you know how this is a Russian game localised to English and so far the text translation's been pretty good? Well, they've not bothered to localise the voice acting. Here's a touch I really like. This quest needs me to go to an old police station. And the quest description gives me the actual map coordinates, so I need to open my map and find the right square, H13. 
This is an excellent way of providing stable guidance but not directly showing where to go. You've given the player all the information they need to use the tools they have available to solve the problem. It's a real shame more quests don't use this system, seeing as the map has grid coordinates. Something I've also just realised that's also kind of annoyed me? The gunshots that you hear? They aren't other players, or even NPCs. It's just part of the ambient background loop. They've put them in the game so you're always looking around trying to find where the gunshots are coming from, makes it feel more alive, but no one is actually shooting anything. I adventure down the train tracks, then get damaged by some strange green fog appearing. I don't want to hang around to see what this becomes, so I keep on pushing forward. I arrive at the police station and... God damn. Other people. They're not typing or saying anything, but they are here. And they're armoured up, so they're clearly higher level than I am. I guess there is a small player base for Anomaly Zone. And finally, I find a shop that buys severed dog heads. I know where to make money. Look, honestly, I don't hate the world design. I like dystopian nuclear futures as a setting, and I like the small touches, the flourishes, like the birds, the dust storm, the distant gunshots, the rubble, the debris. I think there are a lot of nice touches that flesh out the overall feeling of the world. The problem is, it's all set dressing and very little core game. It's like being served a Sunday dinner with nice silverware, nice glasses, a nice tablecloth, nice ambient music playing, but the actual food is just bad. And god damn, if these tiny spiders aren't fast and actually a little scary to have running at you. Enemy variation! I like that. But just then, as I'm appreciating some of the aspects the game does well, it crashes. Again, it's almost like the game doesn't want me to play it. This is exactly what happens when you don't organise your time in a project, and you spend all your money and effort building up the tiny details that don't actually matter moment to moment, or fleshing out systems that most players will never use. There's probably a lot here, but most players won't ever stick around to find it because the main important parts of your game aren't as good as they need to be. My skill level is too low to equip some trousers. I cannot put on the pants. I do not have the skill to do this. I did think this whole map might be like a starting area, but no, I can't leave the city. I'm thinking this is just the whole game. Which, again, is fine. A small map means quality can work, but it's just not quality either. My weapons have auto-unequipped themselves, and there are lots of NPCs hanging around, and these dogs don't look like zombie dogs, they're just walking around normally, so I guess this is a safe place. I guessed wrong. So I respawn and, oh hey, I've respawned right next to where I died. Time to get some revenge on that dog. Are you having a laugh game? I got spawn camped by a dog. That's not even funny. You know what, maybe I'll just follow this other player, see if he knows what he's doing better than I know. They're standing by a flaming barrel, so... Oh, I got a greeting emote from earlier, let's use that. What the hell is this? Why am I just flopping my arm around? No one waves like that, who animated this? Well, he's no help, so out into the great unknown again, and... I die. And then the game crashes, which is like dying twice. Okay, you know what? One last attempt to make progress. You cannot outrun the rats, and they take massive chunks of your health off you every time they hit you. I get given a quest to find an artifact. Apparently it's a strange object that appears by the train tracks heralded by green fog. Oh, I saw that! I know where that is! So I go and pick it up, and I'm told to take it to a guy called Picket. And while the map does have NPC icons, they are all stacked on top of each other, so you don't actually know which NPCs are where because it only shows the icon on the top of the stack. Game designers, if you have multiple icons in a stack, when the player hovers the cursor over them, you should have a small cascade menu pop up showing the entire stack. And then again, we meet some other people, possibly Russian, so we communicate in the age-old MMO tradition of just kind of shaking and jumping around for a bit.
Yes, that's right. Come here, fellow wasteland denizen. Embrace me. Let me brush my nose softly against your mohawk. Shh. Just let this happen. Just let this and he's gone. A quest now sends me to the mushroom field on map coordinate J3 section 4 and it seems to be this strange blue floating object behind this barbed wire fence. But the fence runs the entire length of the map. This means navigating the overland is actually quite hard because it's divided into sections and the map doesn't make this very obvious. And while I'm running the length of this fence trying to find an opening, let's just have a look at some reviews. The very first review on Steam leads me down a very strange rabbit hole. Game is relaunch of some older game, can't remember what. Graphics are outdated from 2002 in 2019. Also, people say it's paid to win with the DLC starter kit, so I can see why it would be relaunched again under new name. Damn, I'm giddy that I can't remember how this was called before, but nice try, devs. But then the comment remembers. It was called S-Zone. So I googled S-Zone game and... yep. Sure enough, MMOs.com does have a page for S-Zone Online, a post-apocalyptic survival MMORPG. And the S-Zone screenshots show exactly the same UI and exactly the same gameplay, except S-Zone was first person, not third person. So they likely re-released it as Anomaly Zone and simply pulled the camera back to make it third person. That likely also explains why you can't aim fully down. They haven't optimized the camera for a third person mode. They're still operating in first person development. Would rate higher if the starter pack wasn't giving people guns. Pay to win is all I see. So I go back to the Steam page and I have a look at the DLC. And there is a starter pack. It costs just over £15. I have a look what's in it and... Yep. That will just give you an absolute ton of guns, crafting materials and ammunition. Great game. A lot like Stay Out, but keeps crashing on me. But I like it, as it is fun to play. Trash, literally. I find it funny that this game and Stay Out have the exact same quests, questline, and maps. It's definitely a rip. Screams Sergei Titov all over again. Now, I haven't played Stay Out yet, but the same map? That's pretty easy to check. I can just bring up a picture of the Stay Out map and a picture of the Anomaly Zone map and see how accurate they are. Let's do that. Here is the map of the opening town in Anomaly Zone called Lubech. And here is the map of the opening town in Stay Out called Lubech. Right. They might have a point. Finally, I find a gap in the fence and I head toward the mushroom field and then I get attacked by spiders and then I die. And then the game crashes. Again. Anomaly Zone is a low-budget, third-person shooter set in the irradiated future ruins of somewhere in Russia. All of the extra design stuff, like the UI edging and the weather effects and the deep crafting system is fine, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is buggy and somewhat dull. You won't get to appreciate the small touches if the main game doesn't make you want to play it more. It's not offensively bad, apart from the whole being spawn camped by dogs thing, but there's just no reason to play this when other, better games in the same genre and the same graphical style exist it doesn't do any one thing better than any other game. To end the review, I'll just say that Anomaly Zone is something we've seen before and something we'll see again. It's a low-budget third-person shooter with RPG mechanics. It's not good, it's not dire, it's just broken and forgettable. There is some spark of greatness there, but there are way too many flaws to be seen as anything other than a crap game. It is a zombie dog spawn camping you out of ten. Thank you for watching. Another big thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.